Twitter is an ever-swirling toilet that just won't flush. I wasn't on Twitter for a couple of years. I only got back on the platform because, oddly enough, it's the only way to contact Team YouTube when you need to tell Team YouTube that they once again gave you a bogus strike. So I got back on Twitter, and it's even worse than I remembered. It seems like the main purpose of the platform is to enrage people over things they shouldn't be enraged over. Here's an example. I noticed that Franklin Graham, son of evangelist Billy Graham, was trending, which I've come to understand means either that he died or that he said something that enraged people. So I clicked on the trending Franklin Graham link to see whether he was dead or he said something, and I found out that he's actively promoting Putin's invasion of Ukraine. Just look at these tweets. Trump-loving evangelist Franklin Graham just told his followers, pray for President Putin today. Unreal. This is so sick and messed up, I have no words. Franklin Graham is a traitor. How can Franklin Graham be out here telling people to pray for an oppressor and ignore the defenseless? Franklin Graham is not a true Christian. And now, Billy Graham knows. Franklin Graham, a huge disappointment for Billy. Faux Christian. Franklin Graham asks his followers to pray for Vladimir Putin, who is a murderous dictator. Putin wants to start an unprovoked war with Ukraine, which will kill thousands. Why are Republicans, including evangelicals, always on the side of evil? Shame on the GOP members, Fox News, and religious leaders Franklin Graham for supporting Putin. Russia is still the same enemy that had kids like me hiding under our desks in preparation of a nuclear attack. Now you know I am 100% correct on Franklin Graham. Pray for Putin? Screw you! Franklin Graham, your father Billy Graham would be so ashamed of you. You are just so anti the Christian faith and spirit. I will pray for you, O oh evil one. Lock up Franklin Graham. What kind of sick, demented Christian leader would be supporting and promoting Vladimir Putin as he prepares to invade Ukraine? Fortunately, there are thousands and thousands of these tweets exposing him for supporting Putin's invasion. Oh, how the Christians have fallen. But I wanted to see the evil for myself, so I went to Franklin Graham's Twitter page to see his heinous tweet. Here it is. Pray for President Putin today. This may sound like a strange request, but we need to pray that God would work in his heart so that war could be avoided at all cost. May God give wisdom to the leaders involved in these talks and negotiations, as well as those advising them. Uh, if you want to be upset at Franklin Graham for some other reason, something he said, something he did, I'm sure there are plenty of things you could be upset at him for. But if this is what people are enraged over right now, we've got a serious rage problem. Now, why would Franklin Graham pray for Vladimir Putin? Well, a lot of what happens between Russia and Ukraine is going to be decided by Vladimir Putin. He's the one who will decide whether to invade or not to invade. Other people may influence his decision one way or another, but at the end of the day, he's the one who decides. Should a Christian pray for him? In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, we read, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. According to the Apostle Paul, we're supposed to pray and intercede for all people, including leaders. We pray for leaders so that we can all live in peace as much as possible. Who was the main leader when Paul wrote this? Emperor Nero, an evil, violent man. Why would we pray for an evil, violent man? 
Well, to understand Paul's reasoning, just go one chapter earlier. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 to 17. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the King Eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. So, Paul says, pray for everyone, including leaders. But Paul, Nero is violent and evil. Yeah, so was I, but I changed. But Paul, Nero has been persecuting the church. Yeah, I did that too. What's your point? Think about this. Vladimir Putin sucks. Do you want him to stay that way, or do you want him to change? Christians believe that horrible, violent people can change. It doesn't mean they will change, but we know they can change. And we believe that one of the ways they change is by God intervening in their lives somehow. One of the pillars of the early church was the Apostle Paul, and he went from being a violent persecutor, hellbent on destroying the church, to being an apostle of Jesus who claimed that the greatest thing we can do is love. People have been similarly transformed for 2,000 years. And keep in mind that the person who's talking to you right now is a man who went to prison for bashing a man's head in with a hammer. Do people change? Yes. Should we want them to change? Yes. Should we pray for them to change? If you believe in a God who can intervene in people's lives, of course. Does praying for leaders to avoid a bloodbath make you a horrible, evil person? Of course not. So, why are people so mad when a Christian leader tells people to pray for Putin and for other leaders so that we can avoid a war? There are lots of factors here, but the main factor is pretty straightforward. The algorithms of the major social media platforms are programmed to favor content that leads to more engagement. Engagement is things like shares, likes, comments, reactions, and so on. But we now know that the kind of content that produces the most engagement is content that enrages people. Content that enrages people produces engagement far more easily and rapidly than content that encourages people to be calm and reasonable. When someone says something or does something that enrages people, there's a mad rush as people try to show the world how enraged they are. Then there's the reaction from people who don't like the enraged people, and they're enraged at the people who are enraged. And so you get a trending topic. And then people who weren't paying any attention see the trending topic and click on it, and they have only seconds to decide which enraged side they're on. The entire time everyone on Twitter is freaking out, too enraged to read a book or spend some time with their kids, ads are popping up on the screen, sending endless trunks of ad revenue into the bank accounts of companies that have monetized your emotions. You don't like Putin? I've got a few more Putins for you. They're not about to invade Ukraine. They've already invaded your home your family, and your mind. They make money by keeping you perpetually enraged. And people live like this day after day, week after week, year after year, until they view anyone who disagrees with them about anything as the embodiment of evil. And we're to the point where if you suggest that we pray for God to step in and help us avoid a war, you're basically Hitler. Getting sick of it yet?